guys, it's May May, and today I'm going to be using the Never Ending Calendar stamp set, the large one, not the original one, to make what I think is going to be cool. I've not made it yet. We're going to make it together, but we're going to make a calendar that turns into a mini album. So you use it all year, and then at the end of the year, it is a fully put together mini album, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is you're going to need to put together some things, okay? I have put the measurements for you in a blog post, so everything you need to know is there. I'm going to be building the base out of some chipboard and some of these rings that we use for mini albums because I think it'll work really well. And these are the one and a half inch rings. I plan to use magnets. I'm just going to show you new stuff because there's some things I need to show you first. When you're prepping for your calendar, what you want to do is you want to get your monthly pages picked first, okay? So this monthly page, you're going to need, um, you're actually going to need three pieces. We're going to start with these two here. You want to get your pattern paper to match the month, okay? So there's a reason I'm telling you this. You'll understand when we get to it. This piece here has been cut to five and one quarter by five and one quarter. And what I did was I found my monthly page. So this one is for July, obviously. I'm showing you this so you can see the theme, right? So July is gonna be stars, and then I need another piece to go on top of that that's gonna be four and three quarters by four. I always double check when I tell you on video. So four and three quarters by four goes on top of this, okay? That is July. This is June. You see how I did my colors, how things are gonna coordinate, okay? This is, um, August, because we do a lot of barbecuing in August. This, um, I can't remember all the months I picked out. I think this is September, just because of the wood and we're kind of getting into the fall and I actually decorate in the fall. This is January. It's got snowflakes, so I wanted to use that one. This is Christmas. Like, I don't have anything in order. I just happen to know. This is Christmas time. This one is for uh, November. I, yeah, November is here. This one is for April. Like, I just remember what I picked out. So the pink and the green is April. This one is for um, October, yep, October, and this is for March, and this is what we're going to be doing with this piece, okay? So I had to show you this for it to make sense. So let's go ahead, now that we've got our 12 pages picked out for the months, they all go with the colors that we want them to be, let's go ahead and get this guy ready, okay? This is what's going to hold our calendar in just a few minutes. So each one of these you saw have a coordinating piece and I'm gonna use my tab punch board for this. Now you don't have to use your tab punch board if you don't have one, you can just make tabs and put here. What I'm gonna do with each one of these pieces is I'm gonna use the tab punch to make the tab that'll go at the bottom. It'll actually be down here, but we're gonna punch up here. So the first thing you do with your tab punch is you have this little piece that stores right here. You're gonna place this into the slots that say side tabs. So it's the two slot, two dots furthest away, okay? And then on one edge of our little solid piece, I'm gonna punch and then I will move this little guy out of the way, okay? And I will flip this over and using this edge, I'm gonna line it up to the side that says large. Now, I'm not gonna do this every time. Here's what I'm gonna do every time. <laughs> I'm gonna do one step at a time and come back. Let's go on and finish this one real quick since I've got it so close. You then just slide this under this bar, take your little cutting blade, place it into the slot and slice that away. I'm holding it on the wrong side because I put it in backwards, so you don't need this. This then will hold your calendar and have the month down here, okay? So that gets October done, all right? So here's what I'm gonna do, because I don't like to, like I like to save time, right? So I'm going to assembly line this. I'm gonna put this little guy into it, slot where it goes, okay? And I'm gonna run through, and I'm gonna do all of these punches first. And I'm keeping all of my papers with their backer so I don't get anything mixed up. So I'm just gonna punch, and then place them back with their little backers and keep them in a stack. So I'm gonna do all of this and then we'll go back and do each individual step. To me, this is faster than switching this every time in between. This just makes life easier. Okay, so we've gone through and done all of these. Now I'm gonna move this guy out of the way. I don't need it. I'm gonna go back to my pieces and flip them over and do all of my large punch just like so. You can, if you want to, go ahead and do your large punch and then, then slice this off. Um, that's pretty easy to assembly line like this because I'm not having to move and reset that little slot piece every time. That's what I didn't want to do. So now this guy's ready to go. Goes like 
this. So I'll put you over here. So then I will punch this guy. I will then lay this into the slot here, put the arm down and then slice that little piece off. This is not so bad. I just didn't want to have to do that little tab every single time. So I'm going to run through and do all of these the same way. Large tab punch side. Flip it and put it into the little slot. Slice it out. This is what I love these punch boards for whenever I need them. This is why I collect them. I don't necessarily buy them to use that very moment or for any length of time necessarily, but it's so nice to just have these in your stash. However, and I will say, if you have an electronic cutting machine or you have a punch that makes a tab, use what you've got. This is just what I've got that I like to use to make these tabs like this with, because for me, this is quick and easy and kind of mindless and I didn't have to plug anything in, set up any kind of cut files. I just went to it. That's why I like punches. People ask me all the time, why would you buy punches and punch boards if you have cutting machines? I find that I use these, so I collect them. Now that's all I need my tab punch board for, so I'm gonna put it away. Now I've got all of my little tab pieces and all of my monthly pieces ready to go. So let's work on the building of base for this, okay? So here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a six by six piece of cardstock, another six by six piece of cardstock, and a six by three inch. Let me double check that measurement. Yeah, six by three inch piece of cardstock. Now these two pieces are going to mount together with my rings, okay? Just like if I were making a Brenda album. You remember how we've done those before? I'm gonna poke holes and put these in here. But for this guy to stand up, I'm gonna need a piece at the bottom that will create like a triangle so that it can stand. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna need a binder piece to put this guy together, okay? So this is a one inch by six inch piece of cardstock that I'm gonna score in half. I'm going to use my embossing tool. I'm gonna use the the um, larger end and score this at half an inch because this is a one inch piece of cardstock. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold this to get the fold going and get it nice and creased. And then I'm going to add my adhesive to it. Mostly because it's black and it's hard to see. I like to fold it ahead of time. You don't have to. Totally up to you. And then I'm going to use my adhesive. So this is sticky tape. It's my favorite my favorite sticky tape that is <laughs> and I'm gonna use it today to put this guy on so pull this out and I'm just gonna place it here this tape is made so you can just tear it you don't have to have scissors or anything I just use a little acrylic block and run it to the end because I like to get a nice kind of clean square um, tear on them you don't have to do that you can totally just tear it but I like it I like how square it gets any straight edge will do, by the way. I just saw somebody use an acrylic block one time and it went brilliant, and so I've been doing it ever since. And I actually probably only use this block for this nowadays. I have so many of those other Fiskars blocks that I use. I love those too. All right, I had to use two pieces here because I'm using my skinniest sticky instead of my thicker one. I ran out of the thicker one and haven't replaced it, so I'm just using the skinnier one. So there we go. Now, for placing this, here's what we're going to do. We're going to remove the adhesive protector backer here from one piece one side I should say just like this okay and then I'm going to turn this around now I'm going to place this evenly together what I mean by that is I'm going to line this piece up with the edge of this but I'm going only to the score mark. I'm not going to overlap the score mark. You don't want to do that. You want to just lay it straight to the score mark and put that down just like that. Okay. Now what I want to do, I want to remove this um, adhesive protector here, this whatever you call this piece, this backer, <laughs> remove that. I'm going to take the big piece of the six by six and I'm going to place it standing in that score mark. Okay. This is going to make a space for me, like the right amount of space for this guy to fold up, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is butt this against that um, piece that's standing and glue it down where the tab is hanging out. This will make sense when I move this. So now I'll move this and my space is perfect. See that? I can do this and now this will close with no resistance because I needed that little space. If you butt this together, you're not gonna get this to close, but using the same width that it is by using the same chipboard gives me the perfect space to do that. 
Now this is going to eventually stand like this, okay? So I'm gonna turn this on its side so you can see it. It's going to eventually stand like this. I'm gonna create a flap that goes over. This is my plan, remember I hadn't got there. I'm gonna create a flap that goes over that will magnetize to this side. But my plan is when we're done using this as a calendar and we close it the other way, this way, this flap will magnetize to this side to have a closed uh, mini album. We'll see, I'm trying, we're gonna see if it works. The other thing I'm trying to decide is if I'm gonna add another binder piece here. I don't think I am. I think what I'm gonna do is leave that like that and let that be the outside. See how you can see the fold here, but here you can't. I think I'm going to let this be the outside and let it just kind of stand like that when it's a calendar. But when you close it as an album, I think I'm gonna let that be the part that closes. So we'll see, if I don't like it, I can always go at, back and add a piece. All right, let's poke our holes up here in the top. I notice that I got a really messy cut right here. I'm gonna trim this. So on the side of your crocodile, you have this little piece that you can set at a um, depth. This is one inch. So I'm gonna set this, I think at about three quarters of an inch. I feel good about that. I'm gonna look and see if that will work. That may be too deep because of the way this is gonna land. And let me just look at it and see. Yeah, that's too deep. So I'm gonna set it at half an inch instead and see what that looks like. This is just how you do this. You can just play with these things. And I love that I can set this and then lock it into place. So as long as I have that twisted, I know that I cannot go too far down. Oh, that's perfect. Half an inch is perfect. I know I can't go too far down. All I need to do is mark the width. Now I normally would probably just poke holes but since I'm doing this and I'm putting other papers on top that have to go through these same holes, I need to measure where the holes are gonna go. So I'm gonna use my Tim Holtz ruler that has the zero in the middle so we can center it. And I'm gonna lay it here with just a little bit of my chipboard hanging off. And I'm gonna put it at three inches on this side and three inches on this side. You can see the threes and the threes. So I know this is the center. Now I'm gonna make a mark with a pencil because I can usually see pencil on black. And I'm gonna come out an inch and a half from center. So here I'm gonna go an inch and a half and make a mark. And from here, I'm gonna go an inch and a half and make a mark. Now I know this is where I will need to run my crocodile to poke my holes. And also I will know that I can measure my other pieces to match by doing that. So to make sure these are exactly right, I'm gonna stack them on top of each other. I'm going to run my crocodile over both of them. And I'm using the bigger hole, by the way. This is the 3 16 side. And I'm going to center that mark in there and poke. These things are amazing. I barely had to even work and it went through two layers of chipboard just like that. So there's one side. Let's do the other. Run this up, center my mark, and my holes should be exactly right, okay? So now, let me see if I can make this make even more sense. Let's put the rings in real quick. Those magnets are playing up with these rings. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put this one in like this, lock it down, put this one in over here, and lock it down. You guys always love calendar projects, and I'm late on this one because I could not get it to work out when I was trying to get my calendar pages laid out. This part I've not tried yet, so that's what was taking me a bit on this one. So when this stands, it's gonna stand like this, and this is fine. These won't be exactly like this. Once we put the pages on, it'll put some weight and these will be better, but this is how it'll stand when we're using it, okay? And then once it becomes a mini album, we will close it this way and let the magnet keep it closed. That's the plan. All right, so far so good. Let's undo this, because we're gonna be building here. We're gonna be covering this and everything because I want it to be really cute. I don't know what I'm gonna use on it yet, so I think we're gonna start building our calendar real quick. Now, from the Never Ending Calendar stamp set, there are two stamps we're gonna work with first. And the first one is this one that has the days of the week, okay? So what I'm gonna do is lay this down on my work surface, and I've got the flat side facing up. Never put the side that sticks to your acrylic block facing down. It picks things up and it makes them have to be washed quicker so you can get the sticky back. So just do it like that, and then I'm just gonna place this on one of my presses. I love these presses, it makes life easy. Another thing, when you have a straight stamp like this, because they can be hard to line up, it's best to lay them on the surface and let them be straight, and then just bring the 
a block to it, okay? Same thing with this one. You could easily get this one bent if you're not careful. So I'm gonna lay this one down. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball straighten it like that and then bring this to it. Now this guy fits my block exactly and you can use this with your Misty if you need to. This one might hang off a little bit, but to make it large, we stretched it as far as we could to get you a little more um, surface area for calendar, all right? Now I have cut for myself 12 pieces of white cardstock that are four and a quarter by two and three fourths. Don't worry about measurements, it'll be in the blog post for you. All right, it's time to stamp. Now just as a general rule, I have not stamped this set. I just opened it, just took it out of the package and I wanna show you what I'm gonna do. Especially with the words or with the days of the week, because this is a uh, bold image meaning, it's mostly stamp surface area. I'm gonna kind of prime it. And what that means is I'm gonna ink it up and I'm just gonna stamp it a couple times on just some scrap paper. See how it's a little modelly right there? If you do that a couple times, you kind of prime it and you kind of get a better result. Another thing, when you're stamping these images where the letters are basically impressed into the photopolymer like that, see it's getting better. You don't want to twist these onto your ink pad. It might even be best for you to pick your ink pad up and take it to it, but don't twist because you think that's helping to get the, the ink everywhere, but what it's really doing is helping to fill up those um, holes where the letters are. I prefer to do this one this way. I think I get a better result. All right, I'm gonna do it one more time and then I'm ready to stamp it. All right, so now it is time to stamp the days of the week on all 12 of our pieces. So I'm just gonna run through all of these pieces and at the top of my little page here, I'm going to center this and I'm gonna stamp it. Let me show you a trick too. This has really worked for me. Instead of trying to stamp up there because I can't get my head over, I turn this upside down. You in your own craft room can get your head over, but I try to stay out of camera. But I have found if I do this this way, I get a much better result. I can see what I'm doing. You can see what I'm doing. It's upside down, but it makes life easier for me. Yeah, that was great. All right, we're gonna do that 12 times or 11 more times. Then you're gonna go to this guy. Now, what you have to know is what day of the week the month starts on. So for example, January the 1st of 2019 starts on Tuesday. So what you'll do is you want to ink the first Okay, I'm gonna lay it this way so you can see it. So there's Tuesday, okay? So what I need to ink here is Tuesday the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and then I need to ink 6 and 7 over here. So you ink a section of the stamp and that's what makes it work. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go one through five, then I'm gonna come back and do seven and six. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm right here, I'm gonna ink one through five, just like that. And then I'm gonna come back on this side and get seven and six. So that's all of the numbers that I need. Now, how many days are in January? Let me look on the calendar. I happen to have one open. There are 31. So that means I need all the way through 31. If I didn't need 31, I'd just take a baby wipe and clean the ink off or just don't ink it at all. Then you just line this up underneath the days of the week, just like so. And now I have January stamped, okay? So this is January, the 1st through the 31st. The 31st ends on a Thursday. The 1st starts on a Tuesday, and that's how you do it. But you just move the ink down on the stamp as you go. Now, what I'm gonna do for my project today is on the back, I'm gonna write what month it is. Because if I'm gonna go through all this work, I don't wanna have to look that up again at the end, so I know January is ready to go. Let's do February. Okay, so February starts on Friday. So I'm gonna hover this guy over. I'm using my little press, right? So I need to ink up one, and then I need to go to the right and do two for Saturday. But then I need to come down here and do three. So when I flip this over, okay, I need to do one and two, and then go down here to three. So here's the thing. I also don't need the 29th. So I'm gonna pay, take a piece of tape, and I'm just gonna put it over the number 29 so I don't ink it. And I'm gonna put it over the number 31 so I don't accidentally ink it either. You can wipe this away after you get the ink on it. That's not a big deal. I just find it's easier to do this and then just lift it up. All right, so I need to do, I'm gonna check it again. I like to check again. I need to do one and two and then down to three, okay? So it's one and two, okay? Do the middle. And I'm gonna turn it around and go to three. 
which is here. Perfect, got you all inked up. Check all my numbers. Turn this around, I'm gonna remove the parts that I didn't need here and here. Don't forget these, ask me how I know, you'll have big old blobs. Oh, I didn't do 30, I didn't cover up 30, so watch this, I'm just gonna wipe it off. So you can do either way, okay? And then we will stamp it down. Right like this, line up your, the first and Saturday, just line them up like that and then press. And there we go, that is February, let's keep going. So I got all my months stamped, and if you flip it over, you'll see I have the months written on the back. So those can now be glued down to the pieces that we made to coordinate. And they are these. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue mine down before I um, stamp the month, just because that way I'll know where I want to put the month. So this is January. So I'm bringing this one over, and I'm this is going to lay like this on the page for me. Now how is this going to turn into a photo album? I'll show you right here, okay? You could stamp directly on this piece if you like. That's perfectly fine. I did not, okay? I made these pieces to sit in here like this. Here's why. What I'm going to do is at the end of the month, I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to edit it or crop it to fit this size right here, okay? So at the end of the month, I'm going to take a picture of one major event or have a picture from one major event of our life in January. So for example, um... My boys played a basketball tournament in January and their um, team won. So maybe I want that to be my highlight from January. And so after the month is over, I'll put the picture here. It'll already say January. And on the flip side, I will journal about it. So at the end of the year, I'll have 12 pages focused on our month, you know, whatever our highlight was for the month. And on the back, I can journal about it. So I'm going to glue this piece down here. I'm not going to... Um, put foam tape here. I want to lay this flat because I'm going to be adding that photo later, but you could put foam tape between here and here if you wanted to. I'll show you that in just a second. I'm probably not going to because I may want to add some other little things later. So here's my January calendar. I'm going to center it into this little area I've left myself up here. So at, at the end of the month, after I've had my whole month, I'm going to go through my phone. This is literally what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through my phone, and I'm going to find photos from the month, and I'm going to pick a highlight photo, and it goes in here. All right, let's stamp January here. Just use my VersaFine again. Put the word January right down here in this little spot. Okay, so then this is going to go here, which is then going to get hole punched and hung into my calendar. Now again, if you wanted to, you could put some foam and pop this up on foam. That would be fine to do that. It's not going to hurt anything. You got plenty of room in your calendar. I may end up doing that. I don't know. I may not glue this down until I get done. The only thing you want to do is when you do glue this piece on is make sure you leave yourself room for your holes at the top, which you could go ahead and punch, but I'm going to punch them in a few minutes after I get all my calendars on and after I think I'm actually going to, hmm, I don't know. We'll see how we're going to punch that in a second, but that's how January will line up. Let's do February. So you want to have a good laugh? I thought it was funny. I didn't have February or May made. I don't know why. I didn't have paper for it, but I found these little elephants with hearts and this little pink paper. So we're going to let that be our February and I made one for May as well. So now we need to stamp February and take our February card or our calendar and glue it down. So now I've got all of those assembled. Now I'm going to take some white cardstock and I cut these pieces to be what hold the calendar pages themselves. These pieces are um, five and a half by five and a half. Okay. So I'm, I've got 12 of them. So here's one here. And what I'm going to do is lay this out. This is where I wanted to decide where I was going to hole punch. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and mount all of these center just like this. Let me slide this up a little bit so you can see it. I want to mount everything like this on the white page. Then I'm going to punch my holes. That way I know that everything will be where it's supposed to be. So I can mount my calendars find my glue, which I lost already. I can mount my calendar like so. And remember, I'm doing this very simply. You could be as elaborate as you want. This is your calendar. Y'all know I tend to be simple. I tend to like clean lines and simplicity, but if you wanted to do, um, if you wanted to add ribbon and bling and pearls and all that kind of stuff, this is a great way to do it because this calendar, you're actually going to have some room the way we've designed this to add some dimension in there. 
because we're going to have, you know, it won't be a flat, flat album like if we were making something with um, envelopes or something like that. This one's going to be with the rings, so we have some room for some dimension. So this is January. So at the end of January, I'll put a photo here, okay? Then I will flip this over and I will write about the photo or maybe even do a bullet journal back here. You can stamp, design, whatever you want back here. I just love the idea of not just having a calendar that at the end of the year we're stuck with, but we end up having a photo album at the end of the year, which I think would be super cool. So I'm gonna go through and assemble all these pages and then we'll keep going. So as I'm sitting here assembling, I'm thinking of all the ways you could use this calendar. Can you imagine how cute this would be as a baby's first year calendar where you go ahead and prep the calendar and do it in the theme of baby, if it's baby boy or baby girl. And then every month you put the photo, because nowadays it is the thing to take that picture every month, you know. I know my daughter-in-law has taken a picture every month and it's been so awesome to watch Addie grow and see how much bigger she is because, you know, she uses the same background every month. How cool will it be if you give this as a shower gift um, and you decorate it baby themed and then you tell them this is a baby's first year calendar. So you have an actual calendar. Then at the end of the year, you put the baby's um, picture in there for that month. And then at the end of the year, you have a completed um you know, calendar for the baby. And they can journal on the back to say all of the things. That's one thing I love that Sam does with Addie is whenever she posts a picture of her, her monthly picture, she'll put what she's doing that month or what she's picked up or what she's learned different. And it's really cute. This would be quick and easy for a mom to be able to put this together and have this calendar. Um, even if she weren't a scrapbooker, you know, you could do it for her. Anyway, I love ideas like this that kind of can become gifts or or become something besides just a calendar. So many times we make a calendar for folks, which is great, and I love a good calendar, but sometimes at the end of the year, if you're like me, you're like, well, I don't want to throw this away. They put a lot of effort into it. They made it, and then you don't really know what to do with it. And this way, you're just turning it into an album. You can also see why I wanted the bigger calendar. I love the small one. It's great, especially for those small desktop calendars and stuff that we make, but I really wanted this bigger one um, so we could do stuff like this and focus on the calendar itself. Also, if you'd like to see the smaller stamp set, I'll be sure to link um, a playlist of Never Ending Calendar. I have another calendar project from last year I can show you if you'd like to make a smaller calendar. You could certainly do this same project with the smaller Never Ending Calendar stamp set too. You just um, size it down. I'm still thinking of ways. You know, another way, if you have a family member that goes on missions or maybe they're gone for a year or two years at a time, this would be a neat way to, you know, set up a calendar for the time that they're gone. If they're gone a year, if they're gone two years, and then share a picture, or maybe even if you FaceTime them, snap a screenshot of the FaceTime where you were talking to them on the phone for each month, and then put what you talked about, or make it a journal for them, and they could then put a photo. Gosh, there's so many ways. Think about all the things that people do over the course of a year. Maybe someone's first year at college because um, the summer pictures would be fun when they're out of school, right? Of course, some of your students might, leave, might be like my children and sometimes go all the way through summer. My boys do that periodically too, so. Okay, lots of ideas. Tell me in the comments below what are some reasons you would need a one-year calendar that could turn into a mini album? What are some things that people do for a year that maybe I'm forgetting? Okay, so I've got them all laid out and glued on. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make those same marks that I did for the hole punching, but I'm gonna use my centering ruler again here. So I'm centered on the page, and remember I moved out an inch and a half, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. So here's my, my zero, there's one inch, there's a half. I'm gonna make myself a mark right here. I'm gonna do the same thing here. One and a half and make a mark. Then I'm going to let this be my template piece. So I'm going to punch this one. I'm just extending this line so that when I put my punch in, I can still see the mark through the hole. So here's my hole punch. Still set up from before when I used it. And I'm going to pick this up and run this in. And again, I'm going to center that mark and then punch. And remember, I'm going half an inch down because I still have that marked in here. Okay, now this is gonna just become my template. So I think I'm just gonna take these and kind of stack them up like this and just use that as my guide. So I can do several at a time this way. Let's 
So all my holes punched, they're nice and even, so those will go into the book. Now I need to do that flap thing I was telling you about, because I'm still kind of figuring this one out. But I think what I'm gonna do, is I think I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna erase these pencil marks at the top. I think I'm just gonna use some um, black cardstock to start with and just create for myself a little flap to hold over. Because you do want your calendar to stay open or stay closed once it's an album. So I think what I'm gonna do is just make for myself a piece of cardstock that will come out here and then flap up. So what will have to happen is, once these have the rings in it, it'll go like this. It'll open like triangular, triangular shaped. This will sit here like so, and then I want that flap to come over here. So I'm thinking maybe an inch and a half above, yep, an inch and a half above to wrap around and then whatever I need here. So maybe a three inch flap, let's do it. Let's just see what happens. We're learning together. So I made this piece two inches by three and a half. So I'm gonna score this in the middle. So half of three is one and a half plus a quarter. So I'm gonna score this at one and three quarters. Okay, so that'll be the middle. And then this is gonna become my little flap it's gonna hold this book closed. Now again, I'm gonna cover this with something to make it look cute. But I think, remember since I decided I wanted this to be the open part, you know, when it's standing up like this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this down to here. And my magnets will be out here, but this is where I'm gonna use my little flap area, okay? So, you know what? I think I'll put it down with sticky tape because this will get used a lot and I will be able to um, put sticky tape all over every edge of it. I say it'll get used a lot. It will at least get used once it becomes an album. You know, as a calendar, it'll just sit there. But once it becomes an album, that will change. So let me peel this back. So see, this way I have sticky tape all the way to the edge. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tuck that down because I got that lifted up there. Okay, and then let's bring this over. And I'm going to try to use my cut mat here, my cutting board, cutting mat to help me kind of line this up centered. Feels just about right. Again, I'm not gonna glue down the um, score line. I'm gonna put the score line right past it there. Let it kind of hang off because you get a much better fold if you don't lay over your score line. Okay, so now when this stands up and this is attached where it should be and it has its magnets, the magnet will stick here and hold this into place. Um, it's hard to do till I get it assembled, but that is the plan. So the magnet will go just like that. So let's go ahead and put the magnets on. I think we really should, um, or should we? Let's cover these pieces. That's what we should do now. All right, so you wanna pick whatever cardstock you want and you can make an album cover. I'm not gonna make an album cover yet because I don't know uh, exactly what I want my cover to look like. I am gonna cover it with just some paper to make it look nice and neat. And after I finish my album, that's when I'm gonna make a cover on it. But for now, I'm just gonna cover it with regular cardstock. So let's talk about the pieces that I cut. I decided to do kind of a generic color scheme because remember I told you I don't know what the cover of my album is gonna be. So this is a green plaid, which I feel like is pretty neutral for anything I decide to do. This is just a little kind of black and um, cream colored check. It doesn't really lean itself to any one particular theme. And then I have this little black and white plaid. I think amongst this, when I do decide what my cover is gonna be, which will probably be honestly after I fill the album up and I decide what I wanna put on the outside of it, this will work fine. These two little pieces are to cover a little magnet flap. All right, so these guys, there's two pieces that are five and three quarters by five and three quarters. This is two pieces five and three quarters by five and three quarters. This is two pieces, two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And these are one and a half by one and a quarter. Oh, that's not right. I can feel it. One and a half by uh, one and three quarters. Okay. Again, don't worry. Measurements will be on the blog. So let me show you where these are going to go. So those pieces are going to cover here and here, the back side as well, plus the other piece and our flap. But remember I told you once that I wanted to put the magnets on first. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go ahead and put my rings on just to hold this in place while I'm putting the magnets in place. So both rings are gonna go through just like so. And then I'm gonna use this to help me guide where the magnets need to be. 
So again, don't worry about where these land right now, because once we get them full, once we get the papers in here, it'll be better. What I want to do is know where my magnet needs to live, and this is going to help me do that, okay? So let me get the magnets out. So these are by Basic Gray, and we carry these in the store, and you would have seen me use these recently on the um, poster board purse, and now I'm going to use them again here on this guy. So what you get in the package, I'll show you real quick and open it up, is you get... A negative and a positive, right? There's a positive, and here's a negative. So what I'm gonna do, why did I take it right to it, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel the little um, adhesive backer off of the positive side, and these are pre-adhesived, which really helps. You can add more adhesive. You know, I did that before. I don't think I'm gonna add more adhesive here because I'm gonna be sandwiching this between some cardstock. So what I'm gonna do is put, put this about right, there and stick that down okay then I'm going to put this one on top because that's where it goes they are so strong I'm going to peel this off of the back exposing the adhesive okay so now I'm going to stand this up I'm going to put this little piece where it's going to live when it's all closed put my fingers up here to kind of get it balanced and nice and triangular and then I'm just going to lift this up and stick that magnet where it lands so it will land right here, and now I should be able to pull them apart. I did, yay. So now I can just cover that. Now my question is, and I think this will work, when I turn this around to make it an album, I think I can just flip this on the inside, look, I can, and it will close like that once it's an album. Or I can let the flap be on the outside. I might do that. Once it's an album, I'll let that be on the outside. I think that'll make more sense. So we're learning as we go. So this will be our album front. You know, that'll make more sense. All right, so let's get our covering done. So now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take these off because I don't need them now that I've got that in place. You know, sometimes these ideas get in your head and you're just not sure how to put them down. So I decided to just kind of do it on camera for you guys. And now I'm gonna start with the piece that's gonna go on the front here. And I'm gonna use the plaid. So I think it'll be cute if I just lay this over. I will need to go back and poke holes here, but I can do that in a second. And I'm going to use sticky tape on this one so that it will stick on and over the magnet and it won't cause the magnet to have any another layer between it, if that makes sense. Like if I use glue, it'll kind of put a layer on the magnet and it might make it not stick as well. But this way, I can be sure I'm getting it stuck down really well. Now on the pages I'm going to stick on the inside, I'm just going to use my art glitter glue because I don't have to worry about sealing up a magnet. So I'm just going to use the sticky tape on these two pages. Okay, so we're going to stick this guy down just like so. Just lining that up all the way around. Sealing that magnet in. It'll still work, no worries. I'm going to go ahead and poke the hole in here because if I don't, I'm going to lose it. Because if I go ahead and put the other side on, I'm not going to know where to poke it through then. And I guess you could just do these last, just measure them at the end. So just go ahead and cover your cardstock and then do this part um, all at the same time. All right, we can put the back piece on here. Tell you what, I'm gonna cheat it. I'm gonna hold these here where they're gonna go and just go ahead and poke all my holes right now, just like this. So then all I have to do is glue them in the right places. So here's my back. Now I've got that hole punched right going to glue this one down. I could use the green, but I kind of like that pattern. I think it'll be neat to have a little bit of pattern in there since it's going to be kind of plain. The good news is until it becomes an album, it's a calendar, so it won't be that plain anyway. Got a little glue outside of there. That'll go away. But it won't be that plain anyway because you'll be looking at the calendar, not the cover. This will be hidden until you're ready to put it away as an album. All right, so there's our front piece. Now we can cover this guy. So remember, paying attention to where my front is, now what I'm gonna do is cover this piece in the same color, in the same pattern. Line up my holes, then the paper. So there's the back done, and now I just need to do the inside here. Now for the flap, the one that goes on the back, the little cover that's going on the back, I'm just gonna art glitter glue down. I don't need to really stress about it because it's not holding the magnet in. But on the other side, I want to use the sticky tape. The art glitter glue will work if you don't have sticky tape, but I don't want to wait on the drying time and I don't want to create a liquid barrier here. I'd rather have 
the sticky tape barrier, I think the magnet will work better that way. I don't have any proof of that. It's just in my brain is what it thinks. Okay, in hindsight, make sure you're bringing this magnet in a little bit. Mine's pretty close and I'm having to really burnish that little edge down. So make sure you move your magnet in a little bit so it's in here good and uh, far away from the edge. Okay, so now then, let's assemble this thing and see what it's looking like. So we will start by putting in our rings. Just one there, one here. Okay, then Next, we will start laying in our calendar pages. December in the back, working our way to January. So, November, December. Let's see if I can put four in at a time. Why not try it, right? Sure we can. Now let's see if we can get all the rest in at one time. Probably can't, that felt like that moved on me. I did it. Okay, and then what we wanna do is we wanna put our cover with our magnet facing up just like this, and now we can close this down. Okay. And then this will be our closure. Now don't worry about how different it is right now. See how it's kind of at a triangle like this? When you put your pictures in here and all of your decorations you're gonna add or anything like that, this will fill up. It will still have this kind of shape, but what's cool is, if you think about it, if you decorate your album this way, then your photo album could stand up and be a standing photo album. Okay, I like the way that looks. All right, so how's it gonna be a calendar? Let's look. We're gonna take this guy, we're gonna flip it around, okay? And we're gonna bring this back here to the back and we're gonna let our magnet, oh, it goes to the inside. Remember, we set it that way. So our magnet will go to the back. Get my magnet on there, there we go. Her magnet goes to the back and our calendar sits to the front. So we have January and then we can flip it back and there's February, and we can keep flipping. So this is how it will work on the desk to start with, but when you're done, you'll put your photos in, you'll do your journaling on the back, you'll add all of your decorations, because you know as an album, you're gonna wanna add your decorations to it. And this will then, I like the idea of it being a standing album. <laughs> so if you think about it, when you're doing your pictures, just make sure that your pictures, the ones you choose are landscape, and it's perfect for that. It can be a standing album, much like I did my Christmas album. Let me show you. I didn't make this one standing, but you know it goes in this direction, and this would be really cute to kind of mimic that here. So there you go. That was um, an interesting one for me to try to figure out in my brain how this was gonna work. I really do love how it has turned out though. The magnet just, um, let me see if I can show you, flips up inside like that, and then it will stand so you can have your calendar. Of course, I'm gonna wanna stand those up while it's sitting on my desk, but there's my calendar to look at. It looks like this. And then you can just flip through and have different months. I love it. And I cannot wait to see you guys do it. I can't wait to see one of you guys make this a baby's first year calendar. That's what's going to be really cool is when you do that. But it's very sturdy. Um, it's going to hold together well, I feel like. I don't, I don't see how it's going to be, you know, any issues with it. It's a little different from what I would normally do. I love the idea of it being a standing photo album. Love that. To put that in like a bookshelf and how, oh, too cute. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. It was super fun to do. I cannot wait to see yours. I know you're all going to try this one. When you do, share it with us over on our um, customer gallery on our website. You can share it at maymaymadeit.com. Another thing that's really cool about this, by the way, while I'm thinking about it, when you are ready to do your journaling and decorate this page in whatever way you're going to, because we use the rings, we can take them out and do them on a flat surface and put them back. I'm loving this guy. Love it, love it, love it. Can't wait to finish it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.